Hey guys, so for today we're doing a nice head shave. I do have 24 hours worth of growth. Uh, today is the 27th. Obviously this won't be posted. Uh, probably a couple days after, something like that. Um, so I finally killed a couple of the soaps, uh, two that I've been focusing on, which is Barrister and Man, 42, and Leviathan, both dead. So I've been kind of mixing it up. I've been using a lot of Christmas, wintry scents, uh, just because I love the fall, the winter. I love those style of shaving, shaving soaps uh, and sets the most, probably. Lately, I've been using this one a couple times, and it's such a fantastic scent, so we're going to use it today. It's Sterling Christmas Eve. And it's such, such a great scent. And Sterling, it's super affordable. It's a great price. It's, uh, man, it's been a while since I've bought one. This was used when I bought it. But it's a five, I want to say five, or is it 5.5 ounce? I want to say it's five ounces. Oh, approximately 5.8 ounces. I have the matching splash. I bought this one new. Because, like I said, I got this used last year. And I liked it so much that I ended up buying another puck of it as a backup. Not realizing how long this one's going to probably take me to kill. You can see, it's still a good amount left. We didn't bloom it. Um, but I want to say, like, Sterling is in the... Uh... It's under 20 I don't know, it's like $15 to $18 for 5.8 ounces, which is really great. It's not my favorite base. It's good, though. It's pretty easy to work with. I just don't find it as slick as others, and I don't find it as having such a uh, great post feel as others. I'm not saying it's bad. It's still really, really good. Uh, their aftershave splash, It's it reminds me a lot of like PAA more higher content of alcohol, not very skin nourishing, but it's nice because it smells like it. Um, again, it's one of those things where I'm eventually thinking about trying to go away from having a matching soap and splash where I just do the soaps and then maybe have like two or three splashes that are unscented from artisans that I love their splash and then do two or three uh, different bombs from Artisians I like. So that way I can have the after, uh, like lotion, the aftershave splash, but it's not scented so it can go with everything. Instead of, you know, having to buy, hey, here's 17, here's 17, 34 bucks, you only have to buy one. But I know it's hard because even now, using this, it just makes me want to use this because this scent is a little stronger. And that's where some people are like, oh, just get the EDT or the EDP. And a lot of times that is a lot more expensive than the Splash. So I don't know if that's necessarily the way to go about it. And I don't necessarily think there's a great way to go about it, right? Because I, I love the scent, but do I want it as an EDP, EDT? Probably not. And that's where like that Splash kind of comes in because it's strong. It lasts a little while. But it's not forever. So we'll see. And as I downsize my collection, you know, maybe I'll realize, oh, it's not too bad. Because right now I have 100. 100 soaps and basically 100 splashes. You know, maybe if I had 50 soaps, 50 splashes wouldn't be that big of an issue. But anyways, we're bringing out a vintage Gillette. We're also drinking some seltzer water. But this is your 1930s uh, Gillette New. And I've had one other one in the past, over the last like 12 years. And most of them always have a crack right here. Uh, it doesn't really affect anything, at least the one I had that was cracked didn't. This one though is not cracked. It's in perfect condition. It does have some patina in and I've thought about sending this back in to get it revamped, but I'm still not sure if I'm going to keep it. This is the long comb 
version. I have wanted to for years to try the short comb version to see if that feels better on my skin. This is a sleeper razor. It is very aggressive um, in my personal opinion. This is an Astro SP blade in it, uh, second use. And we got to be really careful with this because this sucker has bit me a couple times uh, depending on the blade and depending on how much I'm paying attention. But it's a very, it's a very sleeper. It doesn't seem like it would be very aggressive, but man, is it aggressive. And it's super efficient. The blade clamping is probably the best blade clamping I've had on any of my Gillette vintage razors. It's just great. And you can see the top cap. It's very similar to a lot of newer aged. And the brush today we're going to be using is this Turning by Tans handle with a TNSL3 knot. Great, great combo. Love Turning by Tans. Love, love, love his handles. And this one, it's just this gorgeous like white cream. So nothing like spectacular crazy about it, but you know what? Sometimes simpler is often, not often, but sometimes simpler is better. And this is a simple brush, but man, this is just beautiful looking. So we're going right to the, and we're tub loading. You can already see I'm getting a good wet load in there. And the scent notes, again, I never usually provide them. The scent on this one to me is a very beautiful pine, evergreen style scent. but a very natural pine. And let's see where that gets us. And one thing I forgot is I gotta turn on the water and I'm gonna get a little bowl real quick so I can clean out my razor. Got the bowl. So this is the water that my brush was soaking in. And we're just going to take some of this. And again, Sterling is just, for the cost, it's pretty good stuff, man. And they've been around for a long, long time. And i got to say, it's kind of crazy that over the years they haven't really raised their prices. But I will say, too, that they were smart because business-wise, like, all of their stuff's pretty easy. They don't have – they don't do any kind of crazy artwork on their stuff, so it's always, like, the same printed sticker with just a different label and uh, – different name, should I say, not label. And maybe they'll add something like this has the Christmas tree. But for the most part, they're not having to pay any kind of extra stuff. Uh, for like an artist to make their graphics or anything like that. And, oh yeah. And from seeing them over the last couple of years, they don't come out with new scents either. Like a lot of other smaller artisans, they'll come out with different scents, something new. So like they'll have their seasonals, but then they'll also try to come up with stuff new sometimes. 
So, you know, you got product development costs with that. You know, you got to test it, see if everybody likes it. So Sterling, they're smart with that. They don't, it's what I would call a no fluff. What you see is what you get with them. And just, I mean, look at this, like, I love the density of it. And I haven't even really worked hardly at all for this type of lather on it, which is nice, man. It's, it's great to have a company where for new users, it's easy to use. And it doesn't hurt to that this brush is phenomenal. So let's get a little bit more water on there. And you know, the difference between, say, Sterling and one of my favorite um, artisans, like on a scale, so, you know, if one of the artisans, say, like McDuff's, I love their soap base. If their soap base was a 10 out of 10, you know, where would I rate this if I'm like, hey, this isn't my best? Because that doesn't tell you the whole story, right? That just tells you, like, oh, it's not his favorite. So that means it's. It, some people could be like, oh, they, it, it's probably crap then. No, not necessarily. I would rate this Sterling in probably the six category. And it ranks good on my, like, hey, usability. Because you saw I barely had to go in there to get any loading done it loads easily and then once it, it's loaded in the brush it's easy to build a lather like super easy first pass So far, this is going really smooth. And the leather's not super, super hydrated. I can tell when it's super, super hydrated because it's falling off my razors. But it's, it's wa washing out very easily. And like I said, I'm using this because I'm in Key West. I live in an RV. This is my RV. And I'm dry camping. So when I dry camp, I try to conserve water. because I'm not hooked up to a water source right now. So I have to go, currently how I get water is I have to walk my little happy ass over with my little, I have like a little uh, four wheeled cart and it carries two six gallon igloo plastic water containers. I fill those up with a hose, come back here, I have to lift them up and use the spout in that igloo container and I dump six gallons in at a time into the RV. And that's how I've been doing it for years. And I always kind of look at it as a free workout basically. But recently, in the last month, one of the igloo spouts cracked. And They're not cheap. They're like, I don't know, 30 bucks each or something like that. But I've had them for years, so I'm like, okay, you know, I got my money's worth out of that one. And I was going to buy another one, but instead I decided to up my game a little bit more in the RV. Because I'm always trying to figure out ways to do things better in life, more efficiently. And with water... Uh, one thing that I've found that you can do is you can get water bladders that are basically like the kind you would take with you to go running or camping. It's just a uh, material, 
plastic or lined uh, with rubber and it's a bladder and you can use that and you fill that up with water and the one I bought online it's man this is going nice it's 30 gallons my fresh water tanks like 30 or 40 gallons you know I always forget uh, because my RV is a 20 I can't remember if it's 2017 or 2018 I always forget but the 2017 and the 2018 of this model has a different uh, tank setup, right? And they're not very different, but one of them is like a 30-gallon water tank, and the other is a 40. So I can't remember if it's 30 or 40. But what I will say is that water bladder is 30 gallons. So... You know, right now I have, like I said, those two water containers that are six gallons each. I only have two, so that's 12 gallons. So it basically would take me three trips to an equivalent of this one water bladder. And, ooh, yeah, see? I just nicked myself, cut off looks like a little blemish might even have been like a pre-starting pimple for all I know but with this one what I've learned is riding the cap works out really well for me some razors I have to ride more of the bar area. Some of them is like a in-between and then some of them I have to ride the cap. And you can see it right there. Whoop. Yeah, see I just nicked a little blemish right there. It'll close up. Get a little water on the head. So not a flawless first pass because I did nick that little blemish, but I gotta say, I'm surprised. This is going a lot smoother than what I remember these last time I used this sucker. And this is on my head. I've always felt like my head, especially the top of my head, is always way more sensitive than anywhere on my face was to shave. But, so I can fill now 30 gallons at a time. So that's less trips to the water station right and on top of that so to get the how do you there's two ways you can do the water bladder to get it into your rv one you can hope that you're because i'm going to put the water bladder in the back of my truck bed because it's a good size it's 30 gallons is is if your truck bed is higher than the water spout on your rv gravity will do it for you well Where I'm at right now, I don't think my truck bed would be higher than my RV water spout to fill that water tank. And I don't know if it would be in the future. And, you know, living in the RV, I want to make purchases and things that are for long term. Like, right, I want it to be dependable, so I want it to be able to last me. And I want it to be efficient, um, you know, with saving weight and all that. Second pass. Um... You know what, second pass, we're going to go with the grain again. I usually don't do that. I usually go against, uh, across the grain for the second pass. But today, I think I'm going to do two passes with the grain. And then, final pass will be like a buffer pass, slash across the grain. And I've been thinking about switching to that style anyways, to be honest. I've been thinking about doing two passes with the grain with my head. Because like I said, my I don't know if every head shaver is like this, but my head always seems to be a lot more sensitive than my face skin. Even with stuff as in, like I'll get pimples on my 
head way easier than I do on my face after shaving, like um, hair bumps and like little things like that. So I got a water pump that it's a uh, 12 volt DC water pump. So I should be able just to plug it in right into the outlet outside my RV. And then I hook up my water hose to the pump and then one hose to the bladder and that pump should do everything for me. So that pump should pump all of the water out. Trying to be a little bit more careful over that blemish. So no lifting anymore, which is awesome guys. Like I'm so excited to get this and it should be here. It should be delivered tomorrow. I won't be able to use it tomorrow though, because we all know how that is. So I get my stuff delivered, not here to the RV park. Cause usually most RV parks won't accept stuff like that, but I have a mail service out in town. So it gets delivered to them, you know, Amazon States by like eight o'clock at night or 10. So tomorrow is Thursday. So if it gets delivered early enough, I can go pick it up. But if not, I'll just pick it up uh, I'll just pick it up Friday, which I'm completely okay with. But no longer will I have to make as many trips anymore. Because, you know, with... The Great Danes, too, they drink a lot of freaking water. They use a lot of water. But, so now I have 30 gallons at a time. And I don't have to lift. Like, lifting six gallons at a time, it's not incredibly hard. But at the same time, after have been doing it now for four years, it it's nice to know that I don't have to do that anymore, to be honest. And see, look at this. It's a little thinner now because we're on our third use, but see how I didn't have to go back to the puck? I, I love that when I don't have to go back to the puck with a soap. And the scent strength on this is still fairly strong for a sterling. It's 5.6. So nothing crazy. the hands um what else on top of that so the bladder once it's empty of all that water it's going to take up so much less room than those six gallon six gallon igloo plastic jugs take up quite a bit of space i mean not a whole lot don't get me wrong it's only two six gallon jugs but still the bladder folded up will take up less room than one of those plastic jugs. So third pass, we're going across. But now I will have more space freed up because of this. So like not only is it going to be easier to get water because I have to do it less often because it's a 30 gallons at a time. But on top of that, I don't have to lift anything anymore that's heavy because a water pump is going to do all the work for me. And then on top of all of that, I'll be saving space. And I'm not entirely sure if I'm going to keep those uh, igloo jugs yet. I might just keep them for like a month just in case something doesn't work out with the 
uh, water bladder. But I'm thinking after that first month, there's no reason to keep them. Yeah, I guess, you know, in case of an emergency, if the water bladder broke, I mean, that's one thing that could happen, right? Is it is made out of a material, so eventually that water bladder could puncture, I guess. But from doing my research and watching the reviews on it, it seems like it's really tough material, so I'm kind of not really afraid of it getting punctured. So that's going to be really nice. That's going to be, as long as it all works out like I think it will, that's going to be a nice upgrade for my RV living. Uh, that's only when I'm not hooked up, right? So usually if I'm in an RV park and I'm on a hookup, you have endless water because you're hooked up to their uh, septic and their sewer systems. So you have endless amounts of water. So that's when I, I won't have to need the bladder. But I do a lot of dry camping, and when I'm in the West Coast, in the Midwest, I do a lot of boondocking on, like, uh, BLM land and stuff like that. And, one, because it's beautiful. And we're back. So, as I was shaving, my phone decided to tell me my storage was full which is something I've been meaning to do anyways, to go through my phone. Because I keep a lot of my shaving videos on there that I shouldn't, because, you know, they're already uploaded to YouTube. I'm just too lazy. And also another thing I've been thinking about doing anyways is getting a new phone, because uh, this is an iPhone 8 that I use. And I've had it for a couple years, and to be honest, uh, you know, Apple's known to do this, and it's, whether you think they do or not, they do, but after a while, um, they purposely make a lot of their stuff not work with older systems, and I think what, we're on like iPhone 15 now or something like that, so it's about time that I upgraded a little bit, and I don't know if I'm going to go, I have been thinking about getting the newest iPhone uh, 15. Uh, it's in the titanium and just say fuck it buy that one and then have it for a while but what I usually do is I usually buy um, I usually buy my iPhones used on Amazon and then I'll buy them a couple models used so like right now if iPhone 15 is the newest and greatest I'll usually buy like the iPhone 13 um, I didn't do that though with this 8 like I bought this when iPhone 13 came out so I've had it a couple of years, and I think it's about time I upgrade. And it's really crazy, though, because my iPhone before that was a, uh, we're going to do the splash, was a 5, I think a 5S. And I only had, like, 20 gigabytes of storage in that. And that was one of the cool things when I upgraded to this one is I have, I don't know, I have to look, but I think I have, like, 60 gigabytes on this one. So it was a big upgrade. Uh, the biggest reasons I upgraded my phone was I wanted more storage and I wanted a better camera slash camcorder and the iPhone 8 had both. And uh, no burn, so that's good. The Weeper has stopped, it looks like, yep, Weeper has stopped. That was nice, that was nice. That was really good. And lately what I've been doing is after a splash, I'm just using one of my bombs over there. I've been using PA Mysterious Serum. As of right now, I'm not sure if I'm going to buy that one again. Um, I have a couple more from other artisans that I've been wanting to uh, try out and use so I can figure out what is the my favorite one out of all of them. But that was a good smell. But yeah, I don't know how I'm already... 
you know, I went from 20 gigabytes with an iPhone 5S, and now I have 60 gigabytes. Is so, somehow I'm still full, right? So like, as time goes on, I feel like we don't realize like we end up carrying more and more in our lives, right? And I know this is kind of getting on a weird soapbox, but it kind of shows through the phones, right? Because now I have three times as much storage. And yet it's still not enough because I just ran out of storage. So it's time that makes me realize it's time today after I'm done shooting this video. I'm going to get on my phone and I'm going to go through all of my photos because I all my shave of the day photos and stuff like that. I keep on here too. I, I rarely ever delete them delete those and like the ones that are more like memories with me and my pups going out or my spouse going out my family doing things like that keep those but even those I need to start figuring out like okay where do I want to put those do I want to put those on like Google uh, Google photo uh, hard drive or do I want to put those on the cloud with Apple because uh, there's no reason to keep all of these photos on my uh, phone and all of these oh man this is really smooth this is a BBS and all of the uh, videos. Oh man, that was great. Uh, so hopefully you guys enjoyed that. That was a three pass. We did uh, 1930s Gillette New. It's crazy. This is almost 100 years old. Still rocking it. Uh, Astra SP number two. We used this beautiful Tan Z handle with a wonderful exceptional turn and shave l3 knot the artisan is uh milton the artisan that makes the tan z handle ryan we used sterling christmas eve and man again banger of a scent it's a nice beautiful pine and there's more to it than that though it's it's like a very warm pine but very realistic it it because some people get a little bit too crazy with their pines, and it's not very realistic to me. This reminds me of walking in a pine forest while it's cold and even snowing out. That's how great this is. And we use the after shaft, after shaft, after splash. And like I said, it's pretty high alcohol to me. Like I don't feel like this is very nourishing right now. But I didn't get a burn from it, so obviously the alcohol content's not too too bad in there. But you know, nothing to write home about. I don't feel like it's nourishing right now. But it's still not bad. Thanks for uh, coming along with my little chat about my water bladder. So hopefully by the next time I make a video, you guys, I'll be able to tell you how much I like it or not. But catch you guys next time.